wondering how everybody's doing. Um, I've come just come back from the dentist and uh, I've never been so prepared for having what I thought I was going to be having um, a amalgam tooth filling taken out and having a full re refill of a composite one you know the white ones that they can do now so when I got there I was a little bit anxious and I had I've got this um resonance this um oh what's it called frequency I've got this frequency device called a Healy that I thought I'm gonna wear it and um, if you saw my post earlier I was gonna have a conversation with how um how are your chakras? You know, how's your alignment today? How's how grounded are you? I didn't get to do any of that. Be the change, yes, tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, I did get to talk a little bit about energy and frequency, and uh, I had my device on, and I had it on a program that's called Calm, and it seemed to work. Anyway, that that's about that. But having my tooth done, um. I've, I've apparently I've bitten well I have bitten on a I think I felt it go I've got a very tiny crack in a tooth at this side at the top on the back and it's been it's been giving me some stick some jip as we say in Yorkshire um when I've been eating cold food and chewing on it and um so I, I knew I needed to get something done so I went and she suggested that I had this filling taken out and then she would see if she could sort of repair this crack and then Today, when I was in this in the chair, she said to me that it might not work, you know, and, and that, so it just, I got this inspired thought to say, could we do a plaster over job? Like, you know, could we just sort of like try and fill in the crack a bit? So she said, yeah, we can do that. You know, and I came out with a bill that's like a third, maybe even a quarter of what I was going to be paying to have a whole thing taken out. And there's no guarantee that either of these processes will work. So I, I'm hopeful that this, she's put a white composite um, sort of touch up, a bit of a paint job. <laughs> it's called papering over the cracks. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping that that will sort of like um, stop the problem of this pain when I'm eating cold food. Because that's the only time it's been bothering me. So anyway, I ummed and ahed about having... Um, a painkilling injection and I remember when I was younger you know I'd like sit in the chair and just steal it out because I was brave in those well braver braver in those days anyway I opted for it she was really good I was sort of like the dentists are becoming I think a little bit more um, awake and uh, I mean I said to her you must you're you're on a level of being as popular as a parking attendant <laughs> she smiled and she said I think we're even less popular than parking attendants so anyway she gave me this I didn't even know that you could have um and what is it when they give you anesthetic that's what I'm trying to find that word um that doesn't have adrenaline I didn't even know that anesthetics had an adrenaline in it anyway she gave me one that didn't have adrenaline in only and only half a shot and it did the trick no problem um, so it was a really good experience of going to the dentist because like many other people I have got a mouth apart from Americans you lot over there seem to really get your teeth done I've heard that said but us Brits and I know I'm generalizing here we seem to have mouths full of amalgam because mercury filling base you know those dark gray fillings um, and I, I'm convinced that in the 70s that dentists were paid to fill for, through our NHS through our NHS and I think I got a mouthful of fillings that I didn't really need because much as I um really well I didn't like going to the dentist but I sort of we had a family dentist um like I think many families did you know we all used to pile in together this is with my mum and my dad you know my mum used to take me to the dentist regularly so that was one of the things she was really good at hoiking me off to the dentist but I had loads of teeth take now. I had a brace and then in the 70s I just kept getting more and more of these fillings when I would be in my teenage years, you know, like young adult. And then obviously they've occasionally they've been dug out again and refilled, but always with amalgams. And as like as long as 20 years ago I was saying, Can we have can I have a white one? Can I have a white one? <laughs> no, they don't work very well. Da -da -da -da. Anyway, she was willing to look at putting amalgam in if I needed an amalgam in. 
So, and I'd got my knickers in a twist about going. I really had because like, you know, I'd got myself some homeopathic medicine. I'd swallowed some charcoal tablets thinking that I was going to have all these toxic fumes as she was drilling this old filling out. And, and then she was telling me about having this um, shield that you could put on this sort of rubber shield that isolates the tooth completely and it comes out of your mouth a bit like a funnel I guess and they go in <laughs> they go in in the funnel god knows I didn't get that far but if I ever I'm super sure I will have to have some more dental work done at some point yeah but just an interesting experience going to the dentist and and drinking dandelion tea and um dandelion root tea you know all these sort of like natural remedies that us wise elder women have sort of like re um are, are beginning to be more aware of and and are like re reintroducing them into our normal life you know milk thistle and all that sort of stuff you know and clearing out the liver and um just helping our bodies in in less sort of like allopathic sort of generalized medicine ways you know more nature ways um and i've been i've been thinking quite a bit about resentment whilst i've been in the kitchen just now and 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 thinking about resentment and how that is such a you know like we get we get trained into not connecting with our feelings anymore as kids we're told to not feel jealous not feel anger those are two that I can think off the top of my head you know it's not good to feel jealousy it's not good to be angry it's not good to ha hold resentment or re resentment wasn't really a word that but I found resentment at the moment is a really good tool for helping me to tap into whether I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing or whether I'm feeling resentful about what I'm doing you know there's that resentment and it made me think you know, do I feel resent resentment more on a having to do something that somebody else wants me to do? You know, there's that sort of thing. And at the moment, we've got some massive conversations going on between friends and families around the differences of how we're handling this current situation, as I call it. You know, and people going off down that route and choosing that option and then other family members and friends choosing that other option, you know, like how well are you doing your difficult conversations at the moment and is resentment playing a part in your relationships you know are you feeling resentment towards others close ones around you being asked or doing something that totally goes against what you want to do for yourself so that in in as much that feeling that resentment for me is a real key indicator that I'm doing something that doesn't serve me. And we've been trained out of that, especially as women, you know, like we've been trained out of, well, don't feel resentful, you know, you'll feel better for helping others and doing what they want you to do, you know, and you think, you go along with it and you think, okay, so where's the feel good from this? You know, because <laughs> you're doing something that's so against what it is you really want. And I can think of times when I've been so in my resentment and, and to the degree that my bottom lip's been on the floor and that I, to all intents and purposes, anybody could tell that I wasn't wanting to do what I was doing. <laughs> so where's the joy in that? You know, we get good at pretending to hide our resentment. You know, like you can feel your bottom lip coming out. Mm, I don't want me to do that and I don't want to do it. And, so it's it's a really useful thing is this feeling okay so what am i feeling here do i really want to do this and if i do it am i going to hold resentment against this person because they made me do it <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a lovely kettle of fish to feel you know this being made to do something that you don't want to do yeah well there's but i have no choice i have to do it of course we have choice we always have choice. We get trained out of thinking that we've got choice too. You know, and I could really get, I have got to be in my bonnet about all of this because I think it's really important. I think we really dishonour. When we're doing something, this is my experience of me, when I'm doing something that I really don't want to do, but I've said yes to, to go along with somebody else's wishes or expectations or even my own projection of their wishes and expectations on me 
I'm dishonouring myself, but not only that, I'm dishonouring them because I'm doing something and they probably know because they can energetically sense it. They're dishonouring, I'm dishonouring them by doing something because I'm not doing it full of my heart. You know, it's not coming from my choice, it's not coming from my heart space, it's coming from some learned behaviour that I was told as a very young person and then believed that if I, I would get a better feel good feeling if I did for others rather than for myself and we forgot, got trained out of how to use ourselves as a barometer for our own well-being but not only that, for others well-being because who wants somebody to do something for, I don't want anybody to do anything for me that they because then they end up not liking me, you know. <laughs> you know, they, they, they sort of like, me, 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 me. and then they end up not liking me because they haven't said no, you know, they've said yes. And then they've built up this resentment against me because they're going against themselves. And that's, that's what resentment is. You're going against yourself. You're going against your, your own knowing of what's really good for you. And it's hard. I find it hard. I still do things for other people and I think, mm, I didn't really enjoy that. Didn't really want to do that. Find it difficult how to say no to that person. You know, you, you um, decide that the friendship is difficult or challenging or not working, you know, and, and it's so much easier just to carry on or disappear. You know, a lot of people disappear out of relationships, don't they? But you can't do that with your close ones. You can't just suddenly stop calling and not arranging to meet anymore. You know, it's just, it just, well, maybe you can. Maybe some families and friends do that, <laughs> close ones. But there has to be, for me, there has to be that sort of, um, I really don't want to do it like this. And this is how I would prefer to do it. And how is that for you sort of conversations? You know, and it leads me into conflict it isn't always about falling out. It isn't always about aggression. Conflict is very um, misunderstood, I think, as a tool for expansion. Conflict is, um, it's seen to be getting your swords out and, you know, like meeting at dawn and the best shot wins, that sort of thing. That's, or conflict in another word for conflict is fight and maybe it isn't that maybe it's a space where peoples or people you know like more than one person can come together yay i'm back <laughs> just had to go put myself on another internet there um where'd i got to conflict yes a space where people can get together and talk through a problem that they've got because relationships are problems they just are. The series of problems, one after another, um, as we go through those gateways of development in them. Oh, that was big, wasn't it? <laughs> it came all out through, through having a, a tooth experience today. Yeah, so I, I lo I'm loving exploring resentment and as, as a tool for... Um, Falling in love with the parts of me that, you know, like, it, it, that's been one of the things that, you know, all these bits that I've been close to, like resentment, like anger, like jealousy, all the dark, shadowy side of us that, you know, that everybody said, oh, it's your shadow side. You think, shadow side, what's that? And then you, I realise that it's all these feelings that I've been trained out of, you know, I've allowed myself to be trained out of those tools have been most useful to me especially now especially now in this day and age <laughs> and this current situation that we're going through because anger resentment um, fear um, judgment discernment choice those things that we've been led to believe but perhaps not available to us or perhaps are something that we should try and rub out of ourselves those very things are in us for a reason it's to help us be human and to help us look after ourselves and 
there's a place for us putting ourselves first. You know, there, there always will be, you know, there will have that, there'll come a point in our life always, I guess, for everybody that you have to decide whether it's me that's going to be the, that, that at some points, I can't think of the words to say there, but at some point you have to put yourself first. Everybody, I think, throughout your life, you get that, you get that message. And for those of us who have showed huge amounts of resentment and bitterness, bitterness, I think, is the end result of hanging on to too many resentments and not resolving your resentment. So you end up being bitter and, you know, you can recognise bitter people. They're just, they're not engaged, they're angry. They, I've just had a guy who I think probably is very bitter, just like blows the horn <laughs> if you don't get out of his way fast enough. You know, that it leaks out, does this anger that we have because we haven't used it in, in the spaces where it needed to be. So, you know, him not dealing with his stuff, I got it on a roundabout. I got the bit of his anger on a roundabout. You know, there's no space to allow this little white car that was probably going slower than he thought it should be, not receiving a blast of his horn. <laughs> And then I had a few bad thoughts about him as, as I was like driving away, I, you know, swearing a little bit and thinking, we got out of the wrong side of the bed. But yeah, so yeah, the bitterness I think is the end result. Bitterness and a disappointment in life, I think is the end result of not making those choices to put ourselves first and hanging on to resentment and thinking, trying to numb yourself to resentment you know, it's massive. So if you haven't explored resentment and what it is to you, and you know, and you can read all the descriptions, you know, everybody, when they want to know what something means, it, we tend to look outwards at other people's um, uh, distinctions and descriptions of certain character traits or words or, and usually, our own inner wisdom i mean you can read and explore and see which resonates the best or which relates to you the best but i think we know deep down inside us our own definition is the thing that counts you know like if somebody if you get angry about something and somebody said well that's a daft thing to get over angry over actually that's their their understanding of their own you know what's worth getting angry over and to finish off, I go back just to, to just to sort of illustrate that point, you know, like I was all in, in a tears about going to the dentist and Stephen couldn't understand what my problem was, you know. So my worry and concern for me about going to the dentist, he would just like, nothing's going on, you know. So everybody's own interpretation of what words mean, what states mean, what feelings mean, you know, all that sort of thing. It's our own, you know, like go and explore the inner knowing because that's where, that's where we really get in touch with ourselves and where we get really get to love ourselves and, and where you feel really um, assured in yourself, you know, that you can hold yourself in those moments where things go all tits up and it's not very pleasant, you know, and you can handle yourself better than I did at the roundabout today with that, <laughs> what it could have... I knew that might have been passive aggressive if I'd have just blown him a kiss. <laughs> I could have, I could have been a bit passive aggressive, and that, the steam might have come out of his ears even more. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being really cross with somebody and they're smiling at you. Is that? <laughs> That's such a passive aggressive technique. Don't use it. <laughs> Not, not if you know that you're being passive aggressive, you know. Oh, we're we're a, a a minefield. Well, actually, perhaps not a minefield. We're a veritable garden of experiences, aren't we? With we're like, just got all these different aspects to ourselves, which make us so beautiful and so unique, and so funny as well. Like if we could laugh at all of this, and I think once. Once, well, for me, once I found that actually my dark stuff wasn't that bad, you know, and I've done some pretty shocking things. And once I'd let go of my own self-judgment of those and, and aimed not to do it again, at least not intentionally, 
and um, forgiven myself for my past demeanours and my transgressions against myself and others, that's where it becomes fun, this self-exploring. It's fun then because you can, I can laugh at myself, you know, like the silly things when my ego pops up, you know, like when I put a picture of myself with a big gapy grin and calling myself Gobby Gilchrist, there's a little bit of ego going on in there, you know, a little bit of look at me, I'm, I'm winning my battle against myself. <laughs> oh dear me. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to go and have a bit of lunch and I'm going to try out and see if the little bit of uh, papering over the crack has worked. I love you lots. Take care of yourselves. Lots of love. Bye.